On this debacle university video, we're going to be looking at testing cannabis plant material for heavy metals and some research articles surrounding this particular topic. All right, let's get into testing cannabis plant material for heavy metals. So as always, we have one scientific article here uh, providing a brief summary on the following slides, as well as a couple other research articles we provided in this video lecture. So starting with the basics here of cannabis being used for phytoremediation. This phytoremediation refers to the procedures which employ plants to scavenge heavy metals from the environment. So if we have soil that's contaminated with heavy metals, using plants, phyto, to remediate or remove some of those heavy metals. This technique depends on the ability of certain plants to sequester heavy metals from the soil so that when food producing crops are planted, there will ideally be no heavy metals in that particular crop. So this kind of picture here kind of simplifies it. Uh, metal embolization and toxicity is reduced. We're then taking up those heavy metals, assembling them in the plant, then cutting down and removing this particular plant with an efficient way to kind of pull the heavy metals out of the soil. Heavy metals can be very difficult to extract from the soil with other means. Plants can be efficient at uptaking that. By removing this plant and discarding that, essentially we've phytoremediated, we've used plants to remediate the soil, remove those heavy metals, take this plant material, cart that off site, and that can allow us to utilize this soil to be used for food crops with very low chance of any heavy metals accumulating in those subsequent crops. So we're looking at heavy metal accumulation in particular. So however, this does lead to concentration of heavy metals in cannabis plants material where they can later reside in products derived from the cannabis plant. So that means that if we're using phyto remediation with cannabis, which can be effective, it is taking up those heavy metals, taking up those pollutants, but can accumulate them not only in the plant material, but potentially in uh, end products that could be used. It is important to understand that some metals are beneficial and essential for life, others are highly toxic and have negative effects on good health. Plants do need certain metals, but typically not the heavy metals like zinc, uh, or high amounts of zinc I should say, cadmium, lead, um, things like that. Cannabis has um, good phytoremediation properties because they can remove heavy metals from the soil with minimal adverse effects. So that's what makes it great as a potential use or potential good plant to utilize in a phytoremediation process. But we need to be cautious because it can great at pulling those out of the soil, but it can accumulate those in potential beneficial plant parts. So user exposure to heavy metals. Why are we so concerned about heavy metals? The user may be exposed to unhealthy levels of potentially toxic heavy metals by smoking or other uh, produced cannabis products from contaminated plant material. For, other, uh, for user safety, it has become standard practice to analyze cannabis plant material as well as products derived from them for a number of heavy metals. We just see here just heavy metals in general, where it could be uh, generated from, industrial product, electronic waste, could be direct contact, could be plants, could be aquatic animals, could affect um, adults, children, and also unborn children in this case. So what are the heavy metals tested for? In typical, uh, most commonly they're tested for is lead, cadmium, mercury, as well as arsenic. However, depending upon which state is involved, this, te this testing list of heavy metals might be longer. Um, so just keep that in mind. These aren't the only heavy metals. These are the typical common four. Others may have more stringent standards. So what's the analysis techniques we're looking at heavy metals? Um, ICP, um, either the OES or the MS, are techniques capable of measuring multiple elements simultaneously. And are this preferred methods where multiple or multi-heavy metal measurements are desired and is regarded to have the best sensitivity and is the method used in many modern laboratories. So this is a good thing we're not just testing just for um, arsenic or just for lead. We want to test multiple these. So the ICP is a great method for that. The Food and Drug Administration, FDA, and the USP, uh, United States Pharmacopeia, uh, have standardized methods for heavy metal analysis, which are very useful resources in the emerging cannabis industry where regulation has been a bit slow to kind of catch up. So we're kind of getting into the regulations of heavy metal testing and uh, cannabis products because we want to make sure the test we're getting is an accurate representation of what is or is not in that plant. 
So this is looking at another uh, research article, but really just at the um, abstract, because only the abstract was publicly available. But again, welcome to look at this, looking at the mycorrhizae comparison and metal accumulation changes in cannabis. So what did this study investigate? Well, the effect of mycorrhizae on heavy metal uptake and translocation was investigated in cannabis plants. Hemp is grown in the presence and absence of 100 micrograms of cadmium and nickel and 300 micrograms of chromium uh, 6 here and inoculated or with the uh, um, fungus glomerus mosaes. So what is mycorrhizae just in general as a quick summary? Well, here we have our plant, here we have our roots, uh, not, no colonization, no mycorrhizae, we just see the roots kind of being able to uh, produce certain exudates, being able to uptake whatever is immediately surrounding them. The advantage of mycorrhizae uh, associations with those roots is it expands the net, uh, the, or the network that these roots have. They're able to get basically um, m water more efficiently as well as other nutrients more efficiently simply because there's a greater exposure of surface area to the soil environment, to that root zone compared to those that are not, they do not have an association with mycorrhizae. So when we look at mycorrhizae colonization, hemp growth was reduced in inoculated plants and the reduction was related to the degree of mycorrhizae colonization. The percentage of mycorrhizae colonization was 42% and 9% in plants grown in non-contaminated and contaminated soils. This suggests a significant negative effect of high metal concentrations on plant infections by the mycorrhizae fungus. Keep in mind soil pH, metal bioavailability, and plant metal uptake were not influenced by the presence of this mycorrhizae association. Now when I say this is a fungus, it is a very small fungus. While it looks very large on the pictures here, uh, it does uh, work with the plants. Uh, you can visually see it here, we, it's, we're stained, but we can visually see the vesicles and the hyphae of the fungus. It's a symbiotic relationship, so the fungus is getting more nutrients and, in this case, metals for the plant. In exchange, the plant provides sugars so the fungus can more easily grow and have a food source. So mycorrhizae enhances translocation, so let's look at more of the specifics of that study. Plants grown in artificially contaminated soil accumulated most metal in the root organ, so the root region. In this soil, mycorrhization significantly enhanced, though, the translocation of all three metals from the root to the shoot. So that's a very important point. That mycorrhizae um, is great at uh, accessing different parts of the soil, accumulating those metals, but what they noticed was that the in the soil that had the mycorrhizae added to it, there was enhanced or improved uh, more translocation, more movement of all three metals from just the root environment up into the shoot and upper portions of the plant. The possibility to increase metal accumulation in shoot is very interesting for phyto uh, extraction purposes since most high producing biomass plants such as non-mycorrhized hemp retain most of the heavy metals in the roots limiting their application. So this translocation is a very uh, important kind of discovery here as far as being able to move those nutrients from just the root environment up into the upper portions of the plant. And we see that here on this diagram where we're seeing kind of the heavy metals and we're seeing them being translocated up here uh, and transported to upper portions of the plant. Now here's another research article, a um, little more current than the, the last one that looks at the non-essential heavy metal contaminants in industrial chemists bioeconomy. So they looked at kind of uh, mitigation of heavy metal uptake suggestions, how to kind of reduce the ability for heavy metals to be uptake and translocated through the plant. They recommended avoiding the use of mycorrhizae. The previous study shown, which I just discussed, showed enhanced translocation of cadmium, nickel, uh, and chromium-6 from the roots to the shoot of cannabis. So it helps move those heavy metals into the upper portions of the plant, which is something ideally uh, we really would not want to have happen. And keep it in the roots, remove that plant, perfectly fine, but as it gets into those upper portions, can get into other vital plant components. 
Uh, other suggestions that they provided here was to avoid the use of acrobacteria, which is another trigger uh, for increased uptake of cannabis associated with this strain. has been shown to um, committedly enhance plant growth, accumulation of cadmium and zinc in fiber plants. This is another additive, uh, another bacteria that can help increase the uptake and translocation of heavy metals in the soil. So want to avoid inoculation of that. Also want to be monitoring the field. Uh, so the farmer must perform a robust soil test as well as monitoring field conditions such as field soil pH, weather conditions related to um, rainwater or irrigation water, uh, irrigation water uh, pHs and things like that are also things that should be monitored and carefully monitored. And as I mentioned, those pH modifications uh, for um, can be injection in irrigation water. Cannabis is acidophilic uh, and basically and the uptake of lead and mercury in plants occurred at pH below the level of 6. Thus ensuring that the pH stays above a 6.5 level in all chemo injection practices can mitigate lead and also mercury absorption in the soil. So when we say chemo injection, this is like growers who are looking at fertilizing with water, fertilizing with water that has a fertilizer added to it. The suggestion here is to keep that pH above 6.5 to reduce the uptake and absorption of lead and mercury by cannabis plants. And then the last mitigation of heavy metal uptake that they suggested would be coupling ozone water treatment with water softener system. Ozone water treatment could help oxidize these heavy metals in irrigation water uh, and coupled um, ionized system with a water softener system could help remove oxidized forms of heavy metals before they're delivered to the cannabis crops. So just another way to mitigate or reduce the amount of heavy metal uptake. So heavy metals are a great concern. Cannabis is a great uh, potential use for phytoremediation. We have to keep in mind of the factors that cause the translocation of these heavy metals and limit the use of those upper portions of the plant, as well as any plant material grown indoors or outdoors, making sure we're getting proper analytical tests that test for the presence of these heavy metals and making sure we're staying below any thresholds that are set.